Right, take 167. Uh, I'm faffing around with two different cameras here, which is not something I'm used to doing. So I'm probably making, I'm probably going to make a bit of a hash of this video, but hopefully it'll be worthwhile. So you'll know from the title of the video what it's all about. Um, if you do a bit of a Google search or a bit of a search on YouTube or whatever, whatever, you will not find many reviews of this stuff. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's it's damned hard to get hold of. You can only get get it in Ireland, to the best of my knowledge. Um, but it's a classic tobacco. It's a real classic tobacco, um, and one which um, which it should be available everywhere else. I, and if somebody can tell me why it's not available other than in Ireland, I would be very grateful to know. Um, I did contact James Fox, J J Fox, in London to ask. And they said they didn't have a license to import it. So um, it's not available here in the UK. Fortunately, I have a good friend um, in Dublin who uh, I got to send me a few packets the other day. And I figured I'd, I'd fill the gap in the YouTube repertoire of uh, tobacco reviews and do one myself. And it is, of course, on the legendary Condor plug. So... I'm not entirely sure why it's so rare, as I say, uh, and also why it's so damned expensive. Uh, basically, that's a, a, um, a 25 gram block. You pay as much for the 25 gram block as you would for 50 grams of any other tobacco. So again, if someone can tell me why it's so damned expensive, I'd also be grateful to know. But I've got to try and keep the video brief because I've got to shoot out in... 10 minutes or so, so I'll try and get this done, this bit of the video done quick. Uh, and on that note, I'm gonna switch over to the GoPro. So, yeah, the legendary Condor plug. Um, comes in a small pack, as you can see. This is a 25 gram block. Let's just open them up here. There we go. So you can see the tobacco right there. Nothing unusual about that to look at. It's a regular, regular looking block. Um, so from what I recall, it's quite a strong tobacco. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to load it into this suitably small pipe, uh, which is a Blakemar Polo. Very, very small pipe. You will need a sharp knife because this is a very hard plug. I did actually watch somebody on YouTube uh, recently who did a view of this tear uh, laterally um, but if you look at the profile of a plug a plug is made up of leaves uh, whole leaves which are compressed together uh, and and they're formed into the plug which means that if you tear it this way and you're and you're tearing off like a, a strip you're not getting the full flavor pro flavor profile of the tobacco because you're only taking off a layer of leaves obviously the whole point of a blend is it's a blend you want to get the whole thing so you need to cut it across the grain, like so. So, oh yeah, beautiful. You can of course cut it this way as well, that's the same, but on a block this size, obviously it's gonna be easier to cut this way. So one of the first things that strikes you about this tobacco is it's oily, really, really nice and oily actually. Um, the smell, the smell is earthy. Um, it's got that kind of Lakeland vibe to it, but um, but it's it's not a very strong uh, Lakeland scent actually. Uh, hmm. Actually, do you know what? There's some. There's a kind of sweet nuttiness about it that's reminiscent to me of Mick McQuaid plug, um, although of course in the smoking of it is absolutely nothing like but there's obviously an ingredient in there they have in common that gives it that sort of sweet nutty aroma so there we go um, let's break that up a little bit so when you cut it like that it breaks up really nice really nice and fine Cut across the grain. You rub it out into this kind of nice 
sort of thin strips, thin ribbon I should say. Let's do a little bit more. This is a very hard plug. So it smells like kind of like condor, like regular condor, but but I wouldn't say nearly as much in fact. It's almost like the other condor is manufactured differently. So there we go. There's our backy. So if you look on tobaccoreviews.com, um you'll find that uh, the reviews say that this is a Virginia tobacco. I can't say for definite that it is. Uh, like I say, I think there's I think there's more in it than just Virginia's, but uh, but I could be wrong. I'm not an expert on these things. Um, it also says that the casings are floral. Well, again, uh, yeah, I mean it's going to be some kind of Lakeland type of um, type of mixture, but I don't know what those casings are. It's Condor at the end of the day. It's quite a unique, quite a unique blend anyway. So this used to be made by Gallagher's um, many years ago. It's now made by JTI, which is Japan Japan Tobacco International, I believe. So whether or not it bears any resemblance to the original Condor plug, I don't know. There we go. That's little bolt pack there um, let's just give you a bit more of an impression of the aroma of this stuff yeah it is it is kind of like the regular condor it's got that sort of dark fruity smokiness and there is some something really sweet going on as well almost stewed fruit Mm. Smells really quite unique. Very, very nice. So let's pop that in a jar. Let's have a little dedicated jar of condor plugs here. the bad boy up and I will uh, give you my impressions of how it smokes. So by the magic of YouTube I have uh, been out to my dentist appointment, excuse me, made myself another cup of coffee and uh, finally ready to smoke this. Um, now I'm doing it in the morning because I'm not allowed to smoke in the house and it will give it time to dissipate a little before my uh, better half gets back this afternoon from work uh, and before I have the plumber around in an hour or two but uh, I'm going to give you the impressions uh, my impressions of this as I smoke now I haven't had any of this for two years probably yeah it's been been about two years so I don't remember what it's like and I haven't had condor for a very long time either the regular condor now I was doing a little bit of a little bit more research in the interim uh, in between uh, the last segment of video in this and um, uh, so Condor and Plug are both manufactured by JTI um, as I say from what I recall and perhaps at a later date I will do a side-by-side -side comparison of the plug and the flake and the ready rub uh, but from what I recall the, uh, the overall scent uh, and aroma of Condor long cut was stronger than this stuff. Just the smell, not the smoke. Uh, but I, as I say, perhaps in the future I'll do a side by side comparison of them. But without further ado, let's light this bugger up and I'll give you my tasting impressions.
All right. First things first, needless to say, this is Condor. Uh, and you don't put Condor in a, in a pipe that you don't mind getting ghosted the hell out of. Um, so uh, yeah, this, this little, um, this little Blakemar Polo, it's only a small little thing, so it's tiny. Um, I, I very rarely use for anything. I think I thought it'd be pretty good for this. Hmm. So right off the bat, I'm not getting any of the soapiness or anything like that, that, um, that a lot of people associate with Condor. Now that may be because, uh, my palette is a little different, um, nowadays to what it was when I first started smoking a pipe and I actually enjoy quite a lot of the Lakeland blends now. Um, so I do smoke a, a decent amount of Ennardale and Boson cut plug and Coniston cut plug is another one of my favorites. Um, and actually on that note, in a lot of respects, this tastes quite a little bit like Coniston cut plug. Now, hmm. Yeah, I mean, in many respects, it is more like Coniston Cut Plug than it is like any of the other Lakelands. Um, probably because of it's dark, um, so I'm guessing dark fired, uh, or maybe it's something in the pressing and steaming process um, that, uh, that I'm not not familiar with that, that kind of gives it that sort of dark, rich, earthy flavour. Uh, it is not a light tobacco. Um, it is, yeah, it, it's not a, what I would describe as being a, a delicate tobacco. But it has got a lot of beautiful earthy flavours to it. So there is definitely something of the regular condor in there. Um, perhaps because this is plug form, uh, the flavours have melded uh, somewhat differently um, to the way that they do in a, a, the long cut flake, I should say, or ready rubbed versions. But perhaps best that I leave um, a comparison to regular Condor for a later video and do a side-by-side -side test. Hmm. But even in a small pipe like this, a very short pipe like this, it's smoking really quite cool. Um, beautiful, thick, creamy smoke. Hmm. And... Uh, were I to be able to smell the room note, uh, I think it would probably be described as pleasant. I would uh, hazard a guess that anybody who was not a pipe smoker, uh, who walked into my house right now, uh, would probably say that there was something quite agreeable about it. Perhaps I'll ask the plumber when he comes around in an hour or two. Now in terms of nicotine, um, it's interesting. I gave up cigarette smoking four months, four months ago now, uh, since I last smoked a cigarette. Don't miss them at all in the slightest. 
Uh, but what I have noticed is that my tolerance to nicotine, because I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, has gone down quite a lot. Uh, and I don't smoke a pipe every day. I smoke a pipe a few times a week. It kind of depends how busy I am, uh, what opportunity I get to, to kind of go outside and enjoy it. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not a, a somebody who smokes all day on a pipe either. Um, so consequently, the nicotine um, tolerance that I used to have has, has definitely subsided somewhat. I would say that this is a medium, a medium, but teetering on the higher end of the medium in terms of nicotine. It's burning down to a beautiful fine ash so far. And it pairs well with a cup of coffee. Mm. Now, getting a bit of a gurgle from this pipe already. And um, I think that's probably because the plug itself uh, is, is quite oily. Um, although it's very, very hard and dense, um, it's, it's quite moist. So um, that's possibly why. Also, it's, it's a short pipe, so the condensation is going to build up pretty quickly in there. Mm. But it really is. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it, without a doubt, it's, it's a spectacular tobacco. Now, I've got a bit of a, uh, a penchant for plugs anyway. Um, and especially the darker tobacco plugs, the uh, and, you know, the Lakelands, things like the Boson's, um, the uh, Coniston Cut Plug. Um, I like that sort of dark, earthy, fruity kind of uh, tobacco. Uh, and this is no exception. This is very, very similar to the general range of tobaccos that I like. Um, yeah, in terms of comparisons, I would say, in my limited experience, I would say it's far more similar to Coniston Cup Plug than anything, than anything else I could put it to. Which is nice. So, mm, it remains a mystery as to why this tiny little plug, that's the packet you get for 18 and a half euro, or something of that nature. It remains a mystery as to why it's so damned expensive. But, One of the reasons why I like a plug tobacco is because uh, it's that it's that ritual that's involved in preparing it. As anybody who's ever hand rolled cigarettes before um, knows, um, one of the things that's uh, that's tricky to give up when you quit smoking is the ritual of rolling what you're doing with your hands, the preparation of the cigarette itself. It's part of that that whole smoking experience is the preparation, and I find that with pipe tobaccos too which is probably one of the reasons why I like the plugs so much um, <coughs> but it's also got that kind of rugged outdoorsy kind of um, vibe to it as well um, it, a plug won't dry out as quick so you can put a plug in your tobacco pouch you can take it away with you for days on end if you're tramping about in the woods or whatever you don't have to worry about it drying out like you do with a ribbon cut tobacco for example uh, or even flakes because let's face it I mean these these tobacco pouches that uh, uh, you know that we use these days. I mean, uh, they don't. They don't. You know, they don't keep your back your backy moist, really at all. So, mm. anywho, so progressing a little bit more down the bowl now. And admittedly, I'm chonging it a little bit because I'm trying to do all of this in one take. Mm. 
the flavor has oh, <laughs> oh yeah yeah the flavors kind of plateaued at this beautiful sweet creamy kind of level um Yeah, so it, it's almost like the flavour has developed a little bit during the bowl. Um, now, I'm not going to sit here for the next 20 minutes and bore you to death while I smoke right down to the end. Um, but I can tell you from experience, from what I recall, certainly, that very much along the lines of Coniston, um, you kind of maintain that sweet creaminess now until pretty much the end of the bowl. Mm. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up because otherwise this video is going to be really flipping long. Um, but if any of you other guys have got experience of, uh, of um, uh, Condor Plug, uh, do let us know. Um, it, it, it is one of those wonderful sort of plugs in the Irish tradition. The, um, those really lovely, hard, um, delicious, full flavoured plugs. But I really do, if it, especially some of you older folks out there, if any of you guys have got experience of the original Condor plug that was made by Gallias, um, and you also have experience of this newer version and can perhaps relate uh, the difference, if there is any, between the two, I'd be very grateful to hear it. So, yeah, um, that's, that's kind of like my review of um, Condor plug. Uh, as I said, in the future, hopefully, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. I haven't got any con uh, any other form of condor at the moment to do that. But in the future, I'll pick some up and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the three different types. You know, the, the long cut, the ready rubbed, and this plug here. Um, but uh, do go out and get yourself some. If you're visiting an uh, visiting Ireland in uh, Dublin, or if you're visiting um, friends over there, or you're, you live over there, do go pick some up. Um, JJ Fox. As far as I'm aware, JJ Fox is the only place that sell it. I may be wrong, it may be available elsewhere. Perhaps it's still available in the small sort of uh, tobacco shops. I'm sure that there's one I used to go to in Limerick many, many years ago um, that uh, that may still be there. Pretty sure they'd probably sell it. But um, yeah, I mean, as far as getting online goes, uh, you can't have it sent over to England anymore. JJ Fox don't do it. You can if you've got a Northern Ireland address. Um, go figure. I, I don't really understand it, but there you go. Uh, yeah, go check it out. Anyway, thanks for uh, watching if you've managed to stay this long. And uh, I'll catch up with you again in due course. Cheers.